I'm gonna tell you why the Phoenix Suns championship window may already be closed. And there's a player on their team that impacts winning more than Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and DeAndre Ayton. And I'm gonna tell you that now. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Rick One Ball coming at you again with yet another classic. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'm making sure I cover each and every NBA game to provide you with up-to-date sports analysis as well as my opinion on these games. Let's get into the game. The Philadelphia 76ers versus the Phoenix Suns. And clearly this is a game that Philly needed to win to maintain any type of upward momentum they could. Now this game will be significant because it's Joel Embiid's first game back since dealing with the flu. He said he's still dealing with some effects of it, but he know he can ill afford to miss too many games. For first reason is this Eastern Conference is stacked up. The second reason is his partner in crime, James Harden, is going to be out for a month plus. Now, James Harden really does not impact winning like that. I think it's safe to say from the Houston Rockets to the Brooklyn Nets and now with these 76ers, he really does not impact the winning. And the Joel Embiid, if you can get him playing at the all-star level consistently, you're going to be a low to deal with every single night no matter who you play. Joel Embiid will come out in that first half and he will make his presence felt. Driving the basketball, dominating the glass, and he even went to the free throw line 10 times in that first half alone, which meant to me he was being aggressive and he wasn't settling. Now he still was taking his occasional fall away from the basket jump shots that I'm not too crazy about, but I felt like Doc Rivers did a good job of mixing and pick and, pick and roll with Tobias Harris so Tobias could be more accessible to them later on in the game. Because we we all know if you don't get Tobias Harris involved early in the game, he can be a straight up model of inconsistency and that's just to be an understatement. Now, what I noticed about the Phoenix Suns is that other than Chris Paul going down in the second quarter with what they're calling right heel soreness, which really just means to me that you're getting old because all Chris Paul really did was step wrong. But that's another story. That's another story. They didn't have anybody that can match Devin Booker's offensive intensity or offensive output. Each time that they would dump it in at DeAndre Ayton, he wouldn't convert and he wasn't on Embiid's level in any way, shape or form or fashion. So uh, D Book was out there by himself basically on the owner island. I'm prop up with me this season on Thrive Fantasy. This is where I do all of my betting, y'all. See, with Thrive, you can cut out all the endless hours of research and focus on the top tier athletes that has the most impact on the game. Choose 10 out of the 20 player props and build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for both over and unders. Hit the most props and rack up the most points for your share at the prize pool. Thrive has over 200,000 in prizes weekly, and if you use my promo code OneBall, they'll even match your initial deposit up to $100. So get into one of those contests and use my promo code OneBall, and they'll match your initial deposit up to $100. Back to the show. Now the Sixers would take a seven point lead into halftime, and Monty Williams of the Suns would come out and make a coaching adjustment. You know, something that Doc Rivers doesn't ever do. <laughs> He would come out and he would switch it to a zone defense. And it was kind of like the perfect storm because it was around the time that Doc Rivers still had Joel Embiid out for his usual third quarter rest. Well, that would be a big problem for the Sixers because the Suns would go on a 19-3 run and bust open the third quarter. And, you know, right on cue, Doc Rivers didn't make any adjustments. He was standing over there with his hands in his pockets, and he really couldn't stop the bleeding. Now, eventually, he would throw Joel Embiid back in the game to kind of calm everything back down because his team was taking terrible shots and it looked they looked really bad in that third period. They was looking bad. George Niang would take over the fourth quarter from the three-point line. I mean, each time the Phoenix Suns got close or within striking distance, he would absolutely torch them from three. I'm talking about on broken plays. Niang is like, look what I found. He's shooting it up, nothing but net. Joel Embiid driving to the basket, kicking it back to Niang, nothing but net. And that would propel the 76ers to this victory tonight, which they really, really desperate needed. But the reason why I feel like the Suns championship window is closing or it's already closed is because you never know when you're going to get back to an NBA Finals. And once you lost against the Bucks in the Finals in uh, 2020, 2020, and then last year you get blown off the floor in Game 7 by the Dallas Mavericks and don't even make it to the Conference Finals. And then this year, you're dealing with injury. Cam Johnson going down with a meniscus tear. And all he quietly does is go out there and put up big performances as well as guard the opposing team's best player. He let everybody else have all the other credit and all the stars have all their credit, but he go out there and quietly put on his hard work, how hard hat, and he goes to work. So I'm just feeling like 
I, I just don't know about this Phoenix Suns team, even though they're the top of the West. I don't know, you know, it's going to be always something with them. Will you just let me know what you think? Just let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. You already know who it is. It's your boy Rick One Ball. Like, comment, subscribe. Woo! Don't hit my phone, bro. If it ain't dope, bro. Don't bro. Bill Code, nigga, too.